Okay, now the next two examples we're going to use to illustrate the difference between compound and uh, what's called simple interest. And this is just here. Uh, simple interest is not super common uh, in use anymore in financial contracts, but it is useful to, to help illustrate how much, uh, how much power uh, and how much earning power you get from uh, having a contract with compound interest. Yeah. So uh, the first problem says you have a choice between investing $10,000 in bank one at a rate of 6% but you're only going to receive simple interest for 10 years. And the choice of investing in bank two at a rate of 6%, but it's going to be compounded annually for 10 years. So both accounts are going to start with the same amount of money. Uh, they're both going to earn the same percentage interest, but one is going to be compounded simply and one is going to be compounded annually. So the question wants to know, what do we choose and how much extra do we receive? And hopefully by now, the first part is clear to you that we, if we are going to earn compound interest, uh, then we are going to uh, be significantly better off. So what we're going to choose is straightforward. So the real question here is how much extra are we going to earn if we have compound interest for 10 years instead of simple? Now, compound interest is the kinds of problems that we work on the calculator. This is our time value of money. That is implicitly or uh, maybe explicitly even uh, always compounded, right? So our formulas for the time value money for present value and future value uh, are compounding interest by their very nature, right? So to solve for compound, we just do everything that we've normally done. This question is saying, if you invest 10,000 now, what will you have in 10 years? So that means it's a future value problem. I want to know what the future value of this account is. So I can plug in the three knowns, my interest rate, my IY, <clears throat> the number of periods that I'll be in this investment account, my N, and my present value, the amount that I'm going to start with. So my IY is 6%, and this is annually compounding, compounded annually right here. So 6% per year, that's my compounding period. Because my compounding period is the year, I don't need to do any further conversions. I just enter my 10 years that this account is going to be active. Present value is the amount that I put into the account. So I am investing, that is a cash outflow. So I am investing 10,000. So I'm gonna make my present value negative 10,000. Then I need to compute my future value to solve for uh, the amount that I'll have at the end of the account. First thing I do is I second future value clear, and then I can clear that on the face. Now it's empty here. Uh, I start entering by 6% and IY, that's my interest rate. 10 years, 10, and then in. $10,000 is what I start with in the account. So negative 10,000, that's a cash outflow. That's my present value. Then I compute my future value and I say, see that at the end of the account's life, I'll have 17,908 and 4770 in my account. Okay. Now the simple interest side is um, sort of belies its name. It's uh, There is no calculator function to figure out how we earn simple interest. Uh, we earn simple interest only ever on the principal amount that is invested. So that means that the $10,000 that we start with is the only thing that ever earns interest. So the interest that we earn in year one, in year two, in year three, they don't continue to earn interest in the following years, not which is what compound interest is. So $10,000 times 0 0.06, that's our interest rate, means that we will earn $600. This is one year's interest. But because we only ever continue to earn interest on this initial $10,000, our interest in every year will be the same. So we have $600 in interest times 10 years in the account, and we will earn a total of $6,000 uh, in interest over the life of the account. So then we can add the principal plus all the interest 
and find out that at the end of the life of the account, we will have $16,000 for a difference of 1908-4770. So you can see that we earn significantly more in a compound interest scenario, right? And the rule of thumb is that when compound interest is working for you, you're always going to be better off, much better off. When compound interest is working against you, you're always going to be worse off. And so the working against you part is in this next example where we are taking a loan out. Okay, so this says, how much more expensive would your $3,000 couch be if you decided to purchase it with an American Express credit card that charge you 21% APR, that's annual percentage rate, but compounded annually, rather than with your Visa card that's only charging 21% simple interest. So assume you don't make any intermediate payments and you pay the couch off all at once in six years, both of which are terrible decisions if you're gonna buy a $3,000 couch on a credit card. Right? But again, we haven't talked about how to make payments yet. We haven't talked about this fifth button on the calculator, uh, and so, once we get to that, uh, then uh, we'll be able to look at more realistic examples. But we'll stick with our simple example here, um, and we'll, uh, we'll start with the compound account. Uh, and uh, and, and the, the way to think about this problem and what it's asking us to solve for is to think about it in terms of a loan. Now, this is slightly different than the problems we've looked at so far, because what's happened here is that I have borrowed a $3,000 loan from American Express or Visa. And I'm promising to pay it off in six years after I, the loan has incurred interest charges. Right. So uh, that is what's going to define uh, the, uh, the cash inflows and outflows. So uh, we are solving for here is future value. How much are we going to owe on this loan if we don't make any intermediate payments for six years? So I wanna know future value. That means I need IY, I need the rate that I'm gonna be charged. I need the number of periods for which I'm going to be charged. And then I need the present value. How much did I borrow in order to spend on this couch? All right, so there's two sort of transactions going on in this example. There's the buying of the couch, but the one that we care about is the borrowing and repaying of the loan. So my IY here is 21%. Uh, this is gonna be annual, it says compounded annually. That means that my compounding period is the year, and so my N is going to be six years. We don't need to do any converting. Present value is the amount that I borrow. And what you need to think about is that when you borrow money, uh, the traditional way that we have been, uh, or the traditional sort of idea of inflow and outflow is swapped, right? So here, the amount I'm borrowing from this loan is an inflow. American Express is giving me $3,000 <clears> to buy this couch. Now, the spending of the $3,000, the subsequent spending of the $3,000 is an outflow, right? I am taking this money that I borrowed and then I'm spending it on a couch. The reason why we want to stick with the loan uh, sort of story when we're solving this problem is that I'm not then selling the couch at the end of the six year period. And I, I'm certainly not selling it at the couch is not appreciating in value at 21% per year. It's not increasing in value, right? So the question is asking me, how much am I gonna owe on the loan? So that's the story, that's the cash flow story that I need to stick with in my solution, right? So I am borrowing money, that's an inflow. So here is one of the rare cases where my present value is an inflow. Uh, and then when I pay back the loan, I compute my future value at the end of the loan, that's going to be an outflow. I'm gonna have a negative amount, okay? So we come back here, we second, future value to clear the time value of money buttons. We uh, have 21% interest, so 21 and then IY. Our N is six years, so six and then N. We have a $3,000 loan inflow 
That's our future, our present value. And then we're going to compute our future value. And we're going to get negative $9,415.2851. So that's ultimately how much the couch is going to cost us because what we're paying back is the loan. And if we haven't made any intermediate payments and we've been charged 21% interest for six years, we're gonna have a pretty hefty bill for this couch. Now on the simple interest case, again, when we are being charged interest, we are gonna be better off without a doubt being charged simple rather than compound interest. And that's gonna be an even more significant difference when the interest rate is really high, right? So on the simple interest case, we're gonna have a $3,000 loan and we're gonna be charged 21% interest every year. And that means that every year we're gonna be charged $630 worth of interest. But because simple interest only earns or charges interest on the principal amount, it won't have any compounding effect and we can, we can just multiply one year's interest times the number of years that the account is active, and we can calculate our total interest as $3,780. Finally, to figure out how much we ultimately owe, we add the original principal of the loan, the principal amount, plus the total interest that we are charged, and we find out that our final bill is $6,780. So we can see that we owe almost $3,000 less than in the compound interest example, which is, again, illustrative of the power and the selective uh, money-making ability of compound interest. When it's working for us because we are earning money, we always want to earn compound interest. But if it's working against us and we had the choice, I would definitely want to have a simple interest credit card rather than a compound interest credit card. So if somebody's making me a loan, I'd love to go simple. It's not, it's not gonna happen. No bank is gonna let you get away with it. Um, and again, simple interest is not that common anymore. Uh, there are a few examples out there, um, but the likelihood that you ever run into one is pretty small. But this is a good way to sort of just get a mental picture of how powerful compound interest is uh, relative to uh, just a very simple transaction.